Okay, we are ready to begin lecture number six, which is the final lecture of chapter two, talking about macroeconomic data. And in this lecture, we're going to be talking about calculating a chain-weighted index number. Now, we've talked about chain-weighted index numbers quite a bit through the chapter, but we haven't really defined what they are. So you might be a little bit confused as to what the heck is this thing called a chain-weighted index number. Now, we have shown that a fixed-weighted index number the weight on each one of the prices that an index number is basically kind of a fancy weighted average of prices or of quantities depending on whether it's a quantity index or a price index but for a price index it's a weighted average of prices and for a fixed weighted those weights stay constant forever they're fixed in the base year and then they stay constant for chain weighted we allow them to change over time but that's about all we've said about what a chain weighted index number is. So I'm going to take a little bit of time now and show you how to calculate a chain weighted index number. And then you're going to um, calculate your own chain weighted index number. So let's get started. So we're going to begin this lecture by going through how to calculate a chain weighted index number. And we're going to use a chain weighted index number called Fisher's Ideal Index Number. Now, Fisher's ideal index number is not the index number that the BLS and the BEA use to calculate things like real GDP or um, GDP deflator or the PCE or PCE deflator or even the chain weighted CPI. But it's a member of a class of index numbers called the superlative index numbers. All right, there are these, this class of index numbers called superlative index numbers, which are all very, very good index numbers. They're kind of the state of the art as far as uh, measurement theory in economics. And so we're going to use one that's very similar. It has the same properties as the one that's actually used. If you look at the one that's actually used, it's, it's actually called a Divisia index number, named after a um, French civil engineer, Francois Divisia. Um, who figured this out how to do these cool index numbers in continuous time so as if you know like we see normally right but um, since in economics we don't really see every instant of time we see points in time so we see a measurement as of January as of February as of March as of and and so on we just see dots along the timeline we call that discrete time and so they'll use the tile turnquest discrete time approximation of the Divisia index number. Now that index number, it's just a little bit more complicated, has a little more math in it, but essentially it's going to do very similar things to the index number we're going to look at, and it has very similar properties. There's a couple of advantages it has over the Fisher Ideal Index number, and that's why it's used, but um, this this index number we're going to talk about today is a very very good one and gets us all the same advantages that the one that the um, US government uses so let's take a look at this first of all on D2L if you look at the um, chapter 2 web page you'll find a link to these instructions this is the chain weighted GPP calculation instructions and you're gonna look at them. they're gonna look kinda nasty but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through them step by step all right, so as you're watching this video, go ahead and have these instructions printed out and in front of you because I'll take a look at them. And if we start, we look at this big ugly formula right in front of you, this guy right here. This formula is Fisher's ideal or the Fisher's ideal index number. And essentially what it does is there's two different index numbers that are state of the art, say circa 1850. One was attributed to an economist by the name of Lesperes. One of them was attributed to an economist by the name of Posh. And well, it's been proven that the truth lies somewhere between the Lesperes index and the Posh index. All right. So if I know what the, if I have, want to find the aggregate price level, let's say, I know that that aggregate price level lies somewhere between what the Lesperes say the price level is and what the posh says the price level is okay and so well let's just take the average of the two and that's exactly what Fisher's ideal index number does it just simply takes the average of these two index numbers so an overview of what we're going to do we're going to calculate the real GDP growth rate using a posh index we're going to calculate the real GDP growth rate using the Lesperes index 
Then we're going to average the two of them together. Now you're going to say, well, where is the average? Well, this is a special kind of average called the geometric mean. So instead of adding up and dividing by n, we multiply up and then take the nth root. Well, here we multiply by 2, and so we take the square root. So there's two, oh, we don't multiply by 2, but there's two things we're multiplying together, and so we take the square root. Okay, so first of all, don't let this formula intimidate you. We're going to go through it step by step, and we're going to do it in Excel, where it's a little easier to figure out and map the notation into what you're doing. So to begin, I'm going to try to go through as close as possible to follow this um, worksheet step by step. So step one, we want to calculate nominal GDP. Now let's take a look at this formula. Nominal GDP is the price level times real GDP. All right, this capital Y sub T is always going to be the um, real GDP, and the capital P is always going to be the price level. And actually, that should have a sub the little price level should have a sub T too. And remember, the sub T time script that mean or subscript that means the time. All right, and we're going to use T as period, we're going to think of period 1 and period 2. Okay, so period 2 is time period t, period t minus 1 is period 1. Okay, so we're always going to be comparing two periods at a time. And that's equal to the sum of the price of each good times the quantity of each good. So if I have apples and oranges, apples are a dollar, and I buy five apples, oranges are 50 cents, and I buy five um, oranges, that's one dollar times five for the apples. That's five dollars plus um, five or fifty cents times five, which is two dollars and fifty cents for the oranges. I add that up. I have a total GDP of seven dollars and fifty cents. Okay, that's that's just very very simple. Add up the um, prices times quantities for all the goods for nominal GDP. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I've opened up an Excel spreadsheet, and this Excel spreadsheet is available on D2L. And so let's take a look here. I've got a column here that's nominal GDP, and it's pretty simple. So I'm just going to type in a basic formula equals um, price times quantity plus price times quantity. And notice what did I do? I just took the price times the quantity in the current period. Because remember, nominal is everything is in terms of current period. And so I just hit return. I got three thousand dollars there. I'm just going to fill that right on down. Okay. And you notice Excel wants to put these dumb little lines in there. If you don't want that in there, you just say fill without formatting. Okay. Next, we want to do the posh growth rate. So let's go back to our instructions. Find out how to do this. Okay, so for each year, except the first year, all right? Now, I want you to remember the except the first year and see if you can figure out why we don't calculate it for the first year. Um, calculate the growth of real GDP using the current year's prices. This is what we call a posh index. All right, and you've got this formula. So basically what we want to do is we want to take price times quantity for the current year and then price for the current year times quantity for the previous year. We'll sum both of those up and we'll take the ratio. And that'll give us what we call the gross rate of change. Or you know how when you do interest rates, you always had to add one plus the interest rate to figure out how much it is? Because the one includes the principal and the, the um, interest rate includes the extra interest. Well, this has one plus the growth rate, so we have to subtract one. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Just remember, subtract one. So let's go ahead and we're going to calculate this posh growth rate. Now, did anybody figure out why you want to exclude the first year? Yeah, because there's no year previous to the first year. We don't have data for year zero. We only have data for year one. So we can't calculate it for the first year. So let's go back to our Excel spreadsheet. And I'm just going to put a little dash in there because I can't. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just going to put a little dash in there because I can't calculate it for the first year. And now I'm going to calculate this posh growth rate for the first year, or for the second year. And that equals, now remember, I'm using current year prices, and the current year now is year two. So what do I want to do? I'm going to take price in year two times quantity in year two plus price in year two times quantity in year two. Now what would I do if I had more than two goods? Well, I just keep going until I had all the goods summed up. 
right? Now, uh, well, we've got to do one little, one quick little thing because Excel, you know, Excel isn't always the smartest when it comes to calculating. We need to put that in parentheses. Why? Because we want it to calculate this sum first. Now we're going to divide that by, because we had the ratio, price in the second year. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my open parenthesis just because it's easier. Uh, price in the second year times quantity in the first year plus price in the second year times quantity in the first year. Now notice, um, what would I do if I had more than two goods? Simple, I just keep going. I keep taking price times quantity for all those goods. But remember, I'm holding price constant in the second year. And now, if I just hit enter, what am I going to get? Well, I get, oh, 110% or 1.136. Well, that's because that's that gross rate. So I want to take that minus one. And that tells me that according to the POSH index, real GDP grew at 10.36% from year one to year two. That's a pretty good growth rate. Now, step two, let's look at the Lesperes index. So let's go back to our, our steps. Now it says again, except for the first year. Why? Because we don't have year zero, so we can't go a year previous to the first year because we don't have that data. So we can't do the first year, but we can do all the other ones. So we'll, we'll start with the second year. We're going to use the Lesperes index, but what we're going to do is we're going to hold prices constant in the previous year. So you notice up here in the Posh index, the P has a sub T on it. In the Lesperes index, the P has a sub T minus 1, right? That sub T minus 1, that means it was the previous year. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our spreadsheet, and we'll do that. So first year, I can't do that, so I'm just going to put a dash in it so I know I can't do it. And I'm going to say, uh, get rid of those stupid colors there, equals, and I need to put it in parentheses. I'm going to take first year price times the quantity from the second year, because it's the second year on top, plus the first year price times the quantity in the second year, okay, divided by first year price times quantity in the first year plus first year price times quantity in the, the um, first year. All right, so basically what did we do? We calculated well, real GDP, uh, if you call it, or GDP holding prices constant in the first year for year two, and GDP holding prices constant in the um, first year for year one. And now we're going to subtract one so that we get the growth rate, and 10.67%. So we have those two growth rates. Let's just fill those down. And we end up with this... Um, the, these growth rates, so 10.3%, 6 point. And you notice they're not the same. They change. All right, one one's a little bit higher than the other one. Well, that's 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 to be expected. Now we can't calculate the um, chain growth in the first year because we just can't calculate the growth rate in the first year because we don't have year zero. But now we have to figure out how we average these two together, because we know that the truth lies somewhere in between these two. That was proven. All right, I'm not going to go into who proved that and how it was proven, but somebody proved that it has to be between these two, um, two index numbers. So let's go back to our instructions and see how to do that. So for each year except the first year, calculate the chain weighted growth rate. In other words, the geometric mean of the posh growth rate and the Lesperes growth rate. Now you may have noticed on this sheet that it's got these stupid little dots over the um, top of the variables. Well, that's just a shorthand notation for the growth rate. So we're just saying this is the percentage change in real GDP, right, by putting that little dot on top. Okay, so we're just going to take the geometric mean, and that's just this one times this one, and take the square root. 
So let's do that. Equals that, the posh index times the Lisbert's index. And then we want to take the square root. Now, I think there is a square root function in Excel, but I'm lazy. So I just raise it to the 1 half power, which is the same thing as the square root. And there we go. We get that the chain weighted index growth rate is 10.51% um, from year 1 to year 2. And we just fill that down. OK? And notice each time it's somewhere in between. Now, you might look at this and say, well, wait a minute. I see a problem with this Fisher Ideal Index number. What if one of these growth rates is negative? Well, yeah, that's a good point. And that's part of the reason why they use um, the BEA uses this a little more sophisticated Divisia Index number. OK, but um, for our purposes, we just won't worry about that. Know that, well, if there was a negative rate in there, well, we could deal with it. All right, OK, so now we want to calculate real GDP. So let's go back to our instructions and say, OK, uh, da -da 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 -da, right now, de declare any year a base year. OK, so one of the things that's important to notice about a index number is index numbers, well, they don't have units per se. All right. We sometimes try to think of them as having units. You know, we talk about two thousand five dollars to give them some kind of, or or two thousand dollars, or you know, refer to the base year and its constant and that to give ourselves some kind of um, way to intuit what it means. But essentially, an index number is not unique. Um, it's unique only to a scaling factor. So we could scale it any way we want to. We could make it equal one hundred in the base year. We could make it equal 3.14 in the base year if we want to, although that would get kind of complicated. Uh, so we need a base year to scale our index number. So we need to choose an, a, a base year. And let's go ahead and choose year 3 as our base year. It's right in the middle. And then once we choose the base year, we'll calculate real GDP in the base year, which is just equal to that's right, nominal GDP. Remember, nominal GDP, nominal always equals real in the base year. Then, from there, we'll calculate the chain weighted index numbers. And so I'm going to do step five and step six all in once. So let's go back here. We're going to pick year three as our base year. So that means real GDP equals what? It equals nominal GDP. So I just say that this guy equals this guy over here in the base year. Now, here's the question. How do I chain the, how do I how do I figure this out? Well, first of all, I know that to get from here, all right, to get from year 2 to year 3, that GDP grew by 9.27%. So I can back that out. All right? I can just say that this equals Real GDP in the base year divided by 1 plus the growth rate of real GDP in year 3. So basically, I'm saying to go from here to here, I multiplied year 2 by 1, by 1 plus the growth rate for year 3. So to go back from year 3, I'm just dividing. It's a little like future value, present value. Um, in future value, I multiply to go forward. In present value, I divide to go backwards in time. It's, it's a very similar concept. OK? And I can fill that up. Because guess what? All I need to know is how much it grew from here to here, which is this number, from year 1 to year 2, which is this number, and the amount in year 2 to figure out year 1. So it turns out it doesn't matter that I didn't know these growth rates for year 1. I can still find real GDP for year one. Now we need to go and calculate the two periods in the future. Well, that's that's easy enough. What we're going to do is we say, well, wait a minute, to get from here to here, to from year three to year four, what did we do? We grew by 8.28%. So we're going to multiply. So equals real GDP in the base year times, right, because we're, we're multiplying because we're going forward in time. 1 plus chain weighted growth rate, and there we go. And we'll drag that down. 
Now something really important to note here. Notice that to get the level, all right, what we call is the, the actual amount of real GDP in year three dollars, so we'd call this year three chain weighted dollars, or year three chained dollars. So right now if you go on the um, FRED or the BLS or the BEA, you would get 2005 chained dollars. That 2005 is our base year. Okay, so we have real GDP, we have all this stuff. Notice we needed the base year to calculate this level, but we didn't need the base year to calculate these growth rates. These growth rates stay the same no matter what year I pick as the ba as base year. And oftentimes we're more concerned with the growth rate than we are with the level. So this is a major advantage of a chain weighted index number. That just because I change the base year doesn't mean the growth rate of the series changes, which is important. Now, next, we need to calculate GDP deflator. Well, GDP deflator, that's simple enough. We've talked about the formula for that, but let's go back to our instructions. Okay, and we want to calculate... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, oh, I guess these aren't on your instructions. Sorry about that. But we know how to calculate chain-weighted um, GDP deflator. That just equals what? That equals nominal divided by the real times 100. Okay, and I can then just fill that down. And then I might want to know what the inflation rate is, which is the growth rate in price level. Now I'm going to show you a trick for calculating that. Now, the inflation rate is the growth rate or the percentage change in price level. And normally what we would do is we do final minus initial divided by initial. But there's actually a trick that we can do that's, that's, uh, that's actually a little more accurate. I won't go into why it's a little more accurate, but, well, it is. So we're just going to take, and we can take the log difference. So if we take the natural log of this guy minus the natural log of this guy, so the natural log of year 2 minus the natural log of year 1, we get a good approximation of the growth rate of this series. So I'm actually going to do an algebra trick and say I'm going to take the natural log of year 2 divided by year one, which is algebraically equivalent to taking the log of both and then taking the difference. And I get my inflation rate. And I can fill that down. And that tells me how much prices grow, price level is growing in each year. Now, something really cool to note. If you, on your own, practice this and change the base year. Say you make the base year year one. Well, the level of the price of the real GDP deflator, right, that will change. And the level of real GDP will change. But the growth rate of real GDP will not change. It'll stay the same. And the growth rate of price level, this inflation rate, will not change. It'll stay the same. And just to prove that, I'll flip over here to sheet two where I have my handy dandy answers set up. All right, and this is the exercise we just did, only formatted a little more nicely. And you can see we got all the same numbers. Right? We chose year 3 as the base year. But let's say I decide to choose year 1 as the base year. Here I've calculated everything all over again, only I made year 1 the base year. And notice, the growth rate of real GDP is exactly the same, and the growth rate of the price level, all right, the inflation rate, is exactly the same. And this is a really, really important part of these chain-weighted index numbers because generally we don't care what the level of GDP deflator is. We care what the growth rate. We care about the inflation rate. That's the variable we're interested in. We usually don't care so much about real GDP, the level. We care about how fast is it growing. So it's very often we care more about the growth rate than about the actual level of the indicator, which means if that's independent of the base year. Hey, great, we can change the base year and no problems. Okay, so that concludes our um, lecture on how to calculate and a little more about these chain weighted index numbers. Um, so, next, you're going to do this on your own. So, there is a spreadsheet already set up that will have some sample data in it, and you will follow those instructions to create this exact same um, table only for five goods instead of two. Okay, I will talk to you later, and this is concludes chapter two.